six years. Here it is after six years. Six six years of showing us the same thing over and over. Oh, I don't know, Rick. It might be a bad one. It's been delayed for six years. It might be a bad one, Rick. Oh, so. <laughs> yes. The Last Guardian after six long years of development. You think it's going to turn into a Duke Nukem forever? I wonder. So, I want to... <laughs> I want to show you some pictures before we start because obviously a lot of people were excited for this and I've played it and um, I recorded footage for it and I was thinking of what to type and that's what you're going to hear momentarily. I was, I was thinking what to type. I typed scripts. I retyped scripts and I was like I, I know exactly what I want to say and I know exactly how I want to say it. But the way I'm wording this, as I'm reading it back to record the lines, the way I'm wording this is kind of coming off asshole-ish. And at the same time, like, I don't want it to come off like that, but I do. And this is a picture I drew yesterday. So this is uh, my friend Valora and me dressed up as a Magikarp. And the story behind this is because I was playing Pokemon Moon with them. And... While I was deciding on exactly how I wanted to record this and the best way to do this, I was like, man, I, I don't know. So I was doing one of the trials. It was the second trial on the, the Water Girl, Lana, where you fight the wishy washies. And after we did the trial, Valora wanted a Milotic, so you need to get a Feebas. Now, Feebas is only a 1% chance. Uh, I found it within five goes, which aggravated her quite a bit and then <laughs> as I was randomly fishing she just kept getting magic up over and over for three hours this went on like she was just fishing for this Feebas which is the one percent rare one but for three hours she was just getting magic ups constantly so she was constantly getting wound up and then while I was just fishing with her I was like oh you know what you can fish up big pearls, pearls. I'm going to make mad money. I'm just going to fish up all the pearls, fish up all of the big pearls, get a lot of money. And as I was just randomly fishing, I found this, a shiny Magikarp. So, obviously, I found Feebas within five goes. She's been seeing Magikarps for three hours. Then, I find a shiny, and she doesn't, which caused her to have a complete mental breakdown and start swearing at the Magikarps, shouting at me for getting a shiny Magikarp, and this uh, this picture was devised from it. So that's just like a little story there, to say like, even after playing this, I took a day just drawing Valora having a complete mental breakdown over trying to get this Feebas and seeing nothing but Magikarp, but I got a shiny Magikarp. So uh, obviously she she did this to me. Or oh, that's 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 how the story that's the drawing of how the story ends. She's dressed me up as a magic carp and now she has her own personal magic carp to constantly swear at because she still was she's still looking for the Feebas. I think she just recently found one as I was uh, now going off to record this. But yeah, so now she has her own personal magic carp to swear at. And uh, seems like she caught one and just like to keep with the story she, the next Magikarp she saw, she caught one and called it Insane Spiral. And it was female, hence the eyelashes on the Magikarp suit. So yeah, she's got her own female Magikarp, person, personal female Magikarp to swear at now. Because they they cause her to have a mental break. So that's that's a story, right? And I I told you that story... And I was look at look at these pictures. These pictures, this picture of me as a magic arp and the shiny. These are the pictures of me just trying to figure out the best way, the best words to describe the last guardian. Because there's all it's six years of development, and you know I in my Duke Nukem Forever review was my first ever review, and this is why I wanted to bring the story up. I liked Duke Nukem. I thought Duke Nukem 3D was extremely good. And it might not have been. But I was I was a Duke Nukem fan. So I was excited for Duke Nukem Forever. So my first ever review was Duke Nukem Forever. 
I was a lot, ca and that was 14 years of development. Just remember, this is six. That was 14, and I I was a little bit biased to it. And games that have been in development for this long, I was a little bit biased to. And Last Guardian, I was excited. I played Shadow of the Colossus. I was excited for Last Guardian. So I was like, but we can't pull a Duke Nukem forever, you know. Duke Nukem Forever, there's going to be no more Duke Nukem games. You know, this is how the story ends. Do we want a ha happily ever after? Of course, everybody wants their happily ever after. Nobody wants to be like, oh, so the series died in a horrible ditch. No, everybody wants to be like, yeah, Duke, Duke Nukem Forever was shit, but, but, you know, it's the last one. So even though there's there's some bad mechanics, like let's say, oh it was it was mediocre, there you go, it got a happily ever after. Duke Nukem gets to gets to fuck the women in his penthouse for the rest of his days. He got his happily ever after. But this one's like, nah, nah, you know what? After the things that I've witnessed, I can't. I just I just fucking can't. It was uh so obnoxious. So that's the pre sell. I know that was seven minutes, but I just wanted to get that story out. That that was the pre setup to this is how how weird this review was because even when I put this review up, by the time some of you see the end of this, because I know some of you are gonna be Last Guardian fans. I know fancy, fancy. I've said, oh, it's overhyped, and he's like, oh, fuck you, Spyro. You say everything shit. You, you say everything is shit. So I know even when when fancy sees this, the end of this review. Fantasy's not going to be happy with me because, um, yeah, obviously it's it's got some issues. And for a Shadow of the Colossus fan like Fantasy that was absolutely a need it, they're going to they're going to fanboy over it. Fantasy is going to fanboy, and they're going to overlook the glaring issues. Whereas now, now that I'm actually a more professional reviewer and not biased like I was in my Duke Nukem Forever. Even though it's been in six years, it's like, it, oh, it really shows. So, yeah, that's that's the preface. So, we're going to get into the review now. And I didn't know the best way to do this. As I say, this Magikarp picture, that was drawn while I was thinking exactly how I wanted to word the script. Exactly how I wanted to do this review. And I, I redrafted it and redrafted it. And then I saw Jim Sterling's video. And it kind of encompassed... A lot of my points and I was like I like how this is structured and we're gonna do something different for this review because again it's been in development for six years and it's it's such a a, a strange title to cover and I'm gonna bring up points that he doesn't so I thought what would be best for this particular review is we're gonna play Jim Sterling's video and it's gonna be kind of like an analysis video uh, but I'm going to throw in my own stuff. So we're going to play a clip of Jim Sterling's video. Then I'm going to pause. And I'm going to give you my argument either for or against him. So if he says like, oh, the graphics look like this. Like he might just make a passing comment saying the graphics look like this. I'll step in and say, yeah, the graphics look like this. this, And I'll do a little bit more in depth. And then he'll bring up one mechanic that he is frustrated at. And I... Also, I'm very frustrated at it. He'll describe it because he did describe it absolutely perfectly, and this was to do with the rewording thing. He describes it absolutely spot on, and I'm like, I couldn't have worded it better. That I could not, after like three redrafts, I could not have worded that better myself. So he'll describe the issue, and then I'll actually go into detail on the issue and how it becomes the most frustrating fucking thing in the game because it does so yeah that's that's like a little a little pre-ramble just to get you prefaced because again i know this is what this is one that is going to be extremely controversial and i i just didn't know the best way to do it because you know <laughs> if we look at my undertale like video <gasps> that's a lot of dislikes so i know uh, this video is probably going to get the same amount but anyway so let's dive in to the last guardian Hello you bushel of urine soaked dog feathers, Jim Sterling here and this is The Last Guardian and if I'm being perfectly honest with you I'm not looking forward to the review of this going up. <laughs> you and me both Jim but I can't imagine why. As I record this it's about 5 to 4 in the morning 
this is a collection of footage I got from the PS4 uh, throughout the past week playing this. And, well, let's just say I... I'm not going to be in agreement with what I imagine the general consensus is going to be, that this is a masterpiece, a truly brilliant, evocative, emotional experience. Um, well, I can pretty much agree with that, but again, I can't imagine why we'd be in the majority at all. I'll agree it's emotional, but the emotion I mostly had with this was frustration, uh, anger, uh, as I was yelling at the screen for the feather dog to do things, uh, because a lot of the time the feather dog doesn't do things. For example, this bit here, um, I've been, I before this, I'd been up on this ledge area several times, and Trico, the, the dog feather bird thing, um, didn't do this. You see where it leaped across because I was there? Uh, I'd, I'd been there several times, I'd called it, and it didn't do anything. And this is where our first big flaw of the game comes in, and my first actual real point of commentary. So you're going to see this across the course of this video a lot, because it is the biggest issue, and considering it is the main part of the fucking game, that's a bad sign. And that is that Trico, oh I guess we know where the lizard part come from, copying Pokemon there, but no, Trico is absolutely fucking brain dead and stupid and half the time it doesn't do what you say now i came up with the perfect analogy for this so as jim said he was standing on the exact ledge calling it it wouldn't come and someone's give me a argument to this which i'll bring up in a moment but what trico what i found trico to be like is a pig or a cow from Minecraft, and you've all had this experience, like all of you have played Minecraft at least once, so you'll know of this experience. Trico's kind of like a pig from Minecraft. That is, you give it an order to follow, you know, you wave the carrot in front of its face and the pig's like, oh my god, there's a carrot, I'm gonna follow you. And you think it's going fine, you know, you're looking at the pig, you've got the carrot in your hand, the pig's following the carrot. But then, for whatever reason, Nobody really knows what it is. Some say it's like because the cow's entering a new chunk and like the 64-bit thing in its brain stops. But for whatever reason, the pig just stops following you. It's like, oh, well, uh, I'm going to look over there now. And it's like, come on, it's turning night. I've got the carrot in f the carrots in your face. It's turning night time. Come on. And it's like, mm, yeah, you have. And I, I should be programmed to follow you, but... I mean, look at this block over here, and it's like, oh, you dick, a creeper's gonna kill you. That's that's the experience that I had with Trico. Like, you will give it a barrel, and trust me, we'll get into the barrels in a bit, but a barrel is kind of like the thing that keeps it healthy, but you'll give it a barrel, and it'll follow you for about five minutes and do what you want for about five minutes, but then it'll just be like, oh, oh, oh. Look at that wall. Look at... Have you... Spyro, have you seen the moss on this wall? Yes, I've seen the moss on the wall, Trico. I really need you to jump up there. Yeah, but the moss on the wall is like, oh my god. You, you piece of shit. So, yeah, it can be best attributed to like a pig in Minecraft where it'll probably do what you want for about three minutes and then it'll just go off on a tangent on its own. Um, now, the reason why... And a lot of people have brung this up as to why it does this. It does come up later in Jim's video and I'll be arguing that point. But uh, yeah, the main mechanic of the game, that is controlling and commanding the dog, doesn't really work all that well because the dog half the time is brain dead. And I'm actually really excited for one part of Jim's video because I had this bit recorded and I'm probably going to show my clip of this bit recorded. And... He had a good experience. I just want to point out what you're going to see at one clip. He had a good experience. I, I had a bad experience with that area. And I'm like, you fucking kid. And at one point, I legitimately looked up a walkthrough. Well, not a walkthrough because it's a new game. But I looked up that area of the game. And it said, the dog does this. And it's like, it's not fucking doing this. And I, I kept trying it. I kept, I, kept, I kept trying it. And the dog wasn't doing it. And I'm like, what? why? And at that point, that is the point where I nearly quit the game. 
and I actually believe, I 100% believed that the game was bugged, like there was a glitch that was preventing the dog from doing this thing. But no, it, it just took a little bit longer and the dog eventually did do the thing that it was supposed to. But again, I'll, I'll come to that, I'll come to that section when I come to it, because that is the mo that was the moment where it went from, ah, oh, it, it's frustrating, but it's not that bad, to the point where it's like, I can't stand this dog's fucking AI. This dog's AI is the most broken piece of shit AI, and you had six years! What, what have you been doing for six fucking years? How could you not get the dog to do the thing? After six years, and and the part I'm talking about, by the way, is a straight hallway. How could you not get the dog to do the thing in a perfectly horizontal hallway after six years? So yes, the the dog's AI isn't the best. Let's let's continue with uh, Jim's video. Uh, as you can see, it already takes a long time for it to do anything, which is another. It's a, it, that's another related but separate problem. Um, I think the big issue with this game is it's got lots of different flaws and issues and setbacks, but they all interconnect. They all interconnect and conspire to make something that is more annoying than it perhaps could have been. Okay, I'll disagree with Jim on this point. The slow pacing does work. So the whole idea of the slow pacing is you're in an ancient, you know, like, monk, Nepalian monastery. It's it's all slow. It's all old-timey. So the slowness is supposed to be part of the world. It's supposed to build the ambience, which it does. You know, all of the ancient devices we'll see later on, like the, the stained glass eye ward thing, it's all supposed to be slowly swaying in the breeze. It's supposed to feel ancient. It's... The slowness adds to the journey, it adds to the world in which it's been built. So I'm going to have to disagree on the slowness, and I kind of enjoy a little bit of the slowness. You know, the the nice gentle pace adds to the overall atmosphere of the world. However, as he says, it is the little things like the dog's absolutely brain-dead AI. So when you combine the slowness, which again, nice pace... But then it's made even slower because the dog's not doing what you want it to do. So when you combine the slow pace with the dog's brain dead AI and the other mechanics that we're going to see, like the barrel that you'll notice is just picked up. Oh, the barrel's a great mechanic. So when you combine the slow pacing with the dog's brain dead AI and the barrel mechanic, it all adds up to, to an even slower pace, which absolutely kills the game. But as I say, like... The initial slow pacing, the fact that it does take a, a slight amount of time to do things, that's fine. It's supposed to be slow. It's, it does add to the overall world that they've built. But because the dog doesn't do what you want when the dog, when you're telling the dog to do what you want, it makes it even slower than it should be. So it overall contributes to its downfall. And that's a shame. Uh, because the game also does a lot of great things. Um, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and straight up tell you this game is awful. Uh, this game is a bad time. It's got a lot of awful mechanics. And a lot of the time I spent with it was bad. But um, it's got beautiful moments. Uh, it's got wonderful art direction that follows in the tradition of, of Ico slash Ico. I, never, I was never sure how to pronounce that. And Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, the dog is adorable. The, the, the feathered dog griffin monster uh, is adorable. Beautifully animated. Lavishly animated. Um, it's just if, if, if only the rest of the game could, could reach what they're clearly going for and sometimes shines through. Okay, so I will disagree with this point again, and this is where I'm now going to talk about the soundtrack and the graphics overall, which Jim just barely skims over here. He's saying that everything mixed together can make something okay, and I'll agree with that. It's not a terrible game. If you wish to play The Last Guardian, then be my guest. If you want to have, I'm not going to say a good game, if you want to have a okay experience if you want to at least experience it 
then please by all means do go ahead but just remember this is not the experience you asked for it's still an okay experience it's nothing good it's nothing bad um now we'll go into parts where he said like the visuals look amazing they don't look that good i'm just going to touch on the soundtrack first before i fully get into the graphics but the soundtrack isn't all that existent either it's more ambient noises i'll play two particular clips in order the first one is this one here which i'll just talk over now uh, as you will be able to hear it's more just dead silence inside this monastery and it is just the clanging of the pot that I am throwing to the dog and um, the rattling of the change. You can also see in this particular clip how the dog's brain dead AI again doesn't work. You know, the dog is supposed to, when we hook this pot onto the chain, the dog is just supposed to pull the pot, pull the chain and allow us to walk through the door. But if you look at the door behind it, the dog isn't doing what it's supposed to do. So the door's opening and closing, making it rather difficult to go through the actual door. So there's another instance of the dog's stupid AI. But, as you can hear from the, the surrounding area, there's no real music. It's just the clanging of the pot, the rattling of the chain, and the door going up and down. And even after we pass through, that isn't actually that much music, it's just more ambient noises. Again, I don't believe this is a bad thing for the most part. It is supposed to be an old abandoned monastery, you know, monks like peace and quiet, all of the, if you go in Zenyata, you need peace and quiet and just the sound of nature for meditation. So, a lacking soundtrack does again add to the world. They have built a fantastic world. But you need, sometimes you'll get to a moment where you think, I myself would have said this was either an important moment or a moment that would need some music. Even if it's just very mild ambient music, I would say I want to put some ambient music there, but the ambient music never really comes. And there are, there are points like that, like one of these uh, midpoints here where we climb this tower and I'll bring up, I'll be coming back to this tower when we talk about one of the physics, but after we climb this tower, uh, the tower starts to collapse, and if you listen now... You hear that? We've actually got a soundtrack in the back. We have a moment that was built up to. The tower collapsed and we saw potentially another guardian. I won't spoil what that is just yet. We'll come to it in the story. But because that was the first time we see that guardian, you know, we now know we're not alone. There's more than one. Because that was like the first encounter, it was a built up moment. It got a soundtrack. It got a it got a uh, audio file, if you will, of the build up and the reveal, and it was all woven beautifully into the actual motions that were going on on screen. The the soundtrack fit what was happening. Now, again, there are moments like that. There are big build up moments like that that I myself think need a soundtrack. That I myself think require some kind of musical cue. And it's just like, oh, here's a built up moment. And it happens, and it's just silence. I mean, obviously, you've got, like, the the ambient noises of the bricks breaking or the the columns collapsing, but it's it, big moments are just silent. It's like, why, why are some moments like the other Guardian's reveal got a musical cue, but then other pieces haven't? So that's... The soundtrack isn't all that there. You know, there's one or two tracks, and they are good tracks. I'll admit, they are good tracks, but there's, there's parts where you think there needs to be track, there needs to be music here that just doesn't happen. But the music overall, for what little music there is, 
it's okay. It's pretty good. And the sound mixing, like on the Cracking Bricks, it, it's sound mixed well. Going back to the graphics, though, which Jim brings up, saying the graphics look stunning. Uh, they, they do, but not for where we are. There are a lot of people that have already been taking screenshots and doing side-by-side -side comparisons like this one where it shows the gameplay footage from 2009 to the gameplay footage from 2016 or even just this is what it looked like in 2009 to this is what it looked like in 2016. And as you can see by this one, not a lot's changed. Like, the 2015 side looks a little better, a little bit higher resolution, but nothing that much has changed. It's really just only the a slight graphical upgrade at best. Like, they said they were delaying this, or one of the excuses for delaying it so long was to polish up the graphics. This doesn't look like six years of polishing up the graphics. This doesn't even look like three years of polishing up the graphics. Like, yeah, they've been polished up a bit. But, I mean, we're talking like... We're talking like Half Genie Hero here, where it's like, oh, it's fully done. Just give us one or two months to, to give it a little bit more polish. Yeah, one or two months polish, I can see that. And this does look like one or two months, maybe six months at most polish. But the graphics are just still pretty much PlayStation 3 graphics. Again, graphics don't make a game. But when you get out into the bigger, wider landscapes, I'll just like play a clip. Uh, this one's from Jim's video, not mine. But uh, I'll just play a clip from Jim's video where he's dealing with this ward that we're going to talk about later. It's an outside area. I mean, you could probably even see it when I was climbing that tower to see the first Guardian, so I'll put them side by side. But this one on Jim's, it's an outside area. And when we get to see the outside, it's all very washed and uh, very low draw distance. So when he's climbing up the ward, we can see down below in that white abyss, we can see structures down there. We can see things down there. But it's all, you know, quite polygonal. It doesn't look like it needed to be on PS4. And if we look at my instance of climbing the tower, while this tower's collapsing, the tower itself looks alright, but if we look at the mountains, the rocks, they're not all that higher than they were, like, the, the delays were not needed, the delays really were not needed, and while, again, graphics don't make a better game, better gra you can have shit graphics and have an amazing game, but here, it, it shows its age, like, I get what they were trying to go with, and if this came out right after Shadow of the Colossus, if this came out in 2010, when it should have, it would have blown everybody away. It would have been like, oh, graphics, amazing, fucking stunning, but now it's like, mm, uh, uh, it looks good. There's nothing wrong with it, it looks fine, but it, it is showing its age because it's it's been delayed for so long. So, uh, yeah, the music, alright, the graphics, they do their job, but they're not all that polished up, really. Um, the game has high, high points, some really clever puzzles at points, uh, and the idea of you being a, a character who is something, you're somewhat of the order in this game, you're, you're something of the one who needs the rescuing, who needs the help, um, you're not powerful, uh, which is something that the uh, Team Ico in particular have, have dabbled with before, but more so in this one, uh, where Trico's the muscle, the one that can actually fight things, the one that can actually, you know, deal with with huge problems, jump over massive gaps, and you help it, but it helps you uh, when it really, really counts. Uh, and I like that idea. I like that idea of just doing away with the whole power fantasy thing completely. Um, there is so much about this game to like. Border on love. Uh, but every time I found myself smiling at the game, every time I found something to really enjoy about the game, uh, I was instantly brought back down to earth by just something fucking infuriating happening. So this is the part where he kind of hints the story without actually saying the story because... 
he doesn't like spoilers, and I'm not going to spoil the story either. Uh, what I will say about it is, the, it is good. Like the whole point of the kid being the brains and the dog being the muscles is supposed to imply a chemistry and a relationship between two of them. Like maybe the kid is part of the dog. Like, maybe it is the dog's brain, and that's why he's got all the way to twos over his body. Maybe that's not the case. I won't spoil it. But, you know, as you go through the level with the dog, um, or all the levels, it's kind of one big linear story, but each section is broken up into levels, so I don't know how you would decide what is the level, level structure. But as you progress through the game with the dog, you will have moments and cutscenes where something's supposed to trigger again this is what he's on about by the frustrating mechanics like there is a one cut scene that triggers when a dog saves you um you know it has to save you first because <laughs> it's uh it's like oh it, do it i'm right here i'm about to die do it and then it doesn't and you die and you gotta do it again okay he's supposed to grab the dog there but he doesn't he's supposed to grab the tail there but he doesn't it's the game does that a fair few times too. But when it does save you, and you actually do get the it saved you cutscene, you do feel that connection between the child and the dog, and it is a nice moment that does make you smile. But again, it is brought down by the frustrating thing of you've got to get the dog to save you before any of that actually occurs, before any of that nice, charming bonding occurs. And it does lead to some interesting puzzles, it's kind of like the stones in the Wind Waker, wherein you're you're like in the the God's Tower, and you can use the ah oh, what's it called? You know the command that you play on the Wind Waker. So your mind goes into the little stone body, and the little stone body hops around. So your the body is doing one thing, and the mind is doing something else. So it does create some very clever puzzles later on in the game where. You've got to be doing one thing, and you've got to control the dog to do another thing. And, um, yeah, it, it does make for some creative puzzles, but again, the dog and its brain-dead AI does drag it down. And the charming cutscenes and the chemistry between the two during the story, it's all very charming and nice, and it, it, makes, it makes it feel good. But the struggle... To get them cutscenes, the struggle to make the dog's AI behave with you makes the cutscenes kind of not worth it. Like, again, when the dog saves you on one of them, and you're, like, cuddling it and stroking it, and the dog kind of, like, the beak perks up to make it look like the dog's smiling at you, it's like, ah, isn't that cute? If only you'd actually save me the first time, and I'm not frustrated because you didn't save me the first time. So you get these cute scenes that are just dragged down by by the struggle to get to them and there are a few other things about the story but i'm going to save them for just a little bit later on in the video as like one of them you already know one of them even if you've never played the last guardian you know one of them and even though you get all these nice chemistry and all these nice uh, cutscenes it's all kind of pointless because you know what's coming. Like, as I say, the kid has got tattoos all over his body. He is running from some kind of authority in the opening. And he runs into this ancient uh, abandoned temple with the, the guardian dog in it. For what reason? Well, you, you find out near the end and obviously something happens near the end. You already all know is coming. And it kind of undermines all all the shit that goes on in the story. But I'll save that for a minute. But overall, the, the, the mechanics, like the interactions between the child and the dog are very nice. But it's dragged down again, once again, by the, the ridiculous wonky physics and the dog's AI. Um, I mean, we're going to get a little example of it here. Now, what you're about to see is not the most egregious uh, example of this happening. But basically you've got these barrels that you feed the dog bird feather dog with. Um, it'll be along in a moment. Uh, I didn't, wasn't too sure of that at the point, at this point, but here it is. Um, you feed these barrels to it, keep it healthy, keep it fed, sometimes just to do it. Uh, and that. 
it, in, in many games, they would just take it as red that if the dog's near the barrel, the dog will eat the barrel. But here, the dog won't eat the barrel if the dog's near the barrel. The barrel has to be in a particular place, at a particular distance from the dog. And sometimes the dog will just knock the barrel away um, and make it even harder to get. Uh, so it's very specific about when it'll eat it uh, and how it'll eat it. And it's reliant on physics, uh, really dodgy physics, uh, and it can just be a pain in the fucking ass. That it went to, it actually did the eating animation there, but just missed it because the game will do that sometimes. Sometimes the game will know what to do, uh, try and do it, and fail. Sometimes you'll know what to do. You'll you'll know what you need the dog to do. You'll tell the dog to do it, and the dog won't do it. Uh, the dog may just sit there for ages doing. Fuck all. To the point where you start to think your solution that you thought you knew was wrong. And you try and do something else. And that solution is wrong, so it doesn't work. So you go back and maybe not even try and do the original solution. Um, you'll try and do something else. But in the course of it, your original, the original thing you thought was the right thing turns out to be right. Because the dog will just go ahead and automatically do it. And you are just left there, exasperated, staring at the screen, thinking... Why the fuck didn't you just do it? Why didn't you just do it in the first place? And that kind of sums up the entire game. And we're getting there. Oh, trust me, we're getting there to the one that exasperated me the most. But that's how I felt with most of the game. The same as Jim. Because I've played a lot of puzzle games, like Fez, right? And Fez, Fez is a difficult puzzle game. Like, it's a really really complex difficult puzzle game a lot of people could not 100% fez I actually feel extremely proud of myself for 100% in fez because you know there's things like you've got to actually know morse code you've got to translate braille you've got to understand what binary is there's there's a lot of advanced creative puzzles in fez and this is a not as advanced as Fez. This is a game for casual people. So, most of the time, the answer was staring me in the face. I knew the answer. You know, I knew what I needed to do. I need the dog to get the barrier gone. You know, whether it be a door, whether it has to, like I showed in my opening footage here, hold the jar to pull the chain to open up the door. Either way, the, the dog needs to remove the obstacle, right? But, Half the time you'll you'll do it and it just won't do it. it. It'll just sit there. It'll just do nothing. And then I'm thinking, is it because I let the barrel go too long? Because as you saw, and this is coming to the the whole point of the barrel, the dog did the eating animation, and I had that once where it did the eating animation, and I thought it ate, and I thought, oh, it's not firing. But then it ate, and it did fire. But another time, it fully ate it. I watched it fully eat it. I took it to the barrier, and it wasn't doing what it wanted to do, and I'm like, oh god, has the barrel run out? Like, is the barrel a power-up? Has the barrel run out? So you go back and see if there's another barrel, and there isn't another barrel, and it, ah, oh, it's, it's so, it's so annoying, and then obviously, as he said, you'll go back, you'll look, you'll look for a barrel thinking that it's a power-up, you won't find a barrel. You'll walk all the way back to your obstacle, have another look at it, and then the dog will just do it, and you're, you're just like, oh. So, yeah, it, it's... The dog stresses you out. It, it really does. But now going to the barrel and the barrel physics, as, as Jim said, the barrel is probably the worst mechanic, because sometimes you'll have to throw a barrel to a specific point, like you might have to throw a barrel over a gap to make the dog jump over the gap, but it's all physics based, and this is not the incredible machine. Like, uh, I'll just put like a piece of footage on screen if I can find it, but this isn't something like the incredible machine that will do the same thing over and over and is 100% physics based. This is more bad rats physics where and go
might drop the ball and it'll kill the cat the first time, but then you might drop the ball and it'll go off the screen the second time. You could not rely on the physics engine to make it do what it's supposed to do. Like, you can drop the barrel in a specific point. Like, you can have it in your hands and it's got to be dropped in front of you. You might release your hands and the barrel drops in front of you once, or you might release your hands, you drop the barrel, but for whatever reason it slightly wobbles and goes rolling down the hill. Or, you might drop the barrel and it'll bounce. You just... You can't rely on the physics. And when the barrel is required to activate the dog a lot of the times, trying to make the barrel and the dog... Now, just remember, I want you to also keep in mind, the dog also has stupid brain-dead AI. Hence the fact that it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So, you've got the dog's stupid brain-dead AI, and you've got to make that brain-dead AI eat a barrel, but not only have you got to make the brain dead AI eat the barrel, but you've also got to rely on the barrel to, to not fuck around with the physics engine bad rat style and have the barrel land where the fucking AI needs to eat it, so it, it's, oh, it, it's a mess. It, the, the physics, when you combine the physics engine with the dog's AI, it becomes a mess, and as I say, we're getting there. We are getting to that point where I was talking about before, where the dog didn't do the thing in the horizontal hallway. Fucking one single corridor of fucking horizontal hallway, and it didn't do the thing. And that was the point where I actually was like looking on the forums to see if I to actually look up the answer. And I was doing the right thing, but it didn't trigger. But as I say, we're we're getting to the part where I I kind of almost rage quit. I did see it through to the end, but we're coming to the part where I nearly rage quit. Uh, and there's a lot of that. Wrestling with Trico's AI, which is abysmal AI. It's like pulling fucking teeth. Uh, and there's just... Uh, it's extra frustrating because I, I want to love this game. It does enough. It does enough. Really, really nice stuff. Not enough to fully redeem it, but enough to tell you that Team Ico still got it. They're just left with a game that is clearly, you know, around 10 years old, and it shows. Yeah, you're definitely not wrong there, but I don't think it does enough for me. Maybe some people it will, but not for me. Because uh, there are so many advancements that have been made in user interfaces, in visual uh, audio feedback... Uh, in AI that just it's not there none of that stuff's there uh, this feels like a game that could have come out like the day after Colossus uh, and if it had done that wouldn't have been as big a problem uh, like I can forgive this game a lot of its problems for its age and knowing what clearly troubled development it must have had but beyond that beyond that I can't I can't ignore the issues I have with the game you sound like I once did with Duke Nukem Forever. I, 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 I let some things slide because of its troubled development. Yeah, mine was in development for 14 years, Jim. You, you gotta let it go, man. You gotta let it go. Which sucks. It really sucks because it's clear that this is a, a special game that took a lot of love and care and work. And that love and that care and that work shows. And... And it, it cuts me up to not be able to say that this game is truly superb, is truly transcendent. But it's one of those games, like, and, and I said this about Heavy Rain back in the day, that it's lucky it's a video game. And it's lucky that video games can be more than just uh, the sum of their parts. Um, this is almost the opposite of, of Heavy Rain, where Heavy Rain, I said, was lucky it was a game because of its uh, mechanics. And... Um, the story and the atmosphere was just terribly portrayed, terribly written, terribly put together. But because the gameplay was, you know, fun in a sort of Dragon's Lair kind of way, uh, it redeemed it. Whereas this one, it's the opposite problem, where mechanically everything is just bollocks. Um, just makes me shudder to play sometimes. But the experience, the atmosphere, the story, the characters... Um, have a lot of a lot of redemption associated with with them um they they 
make the game more better than it. More better, that's terrible sentencing. Uh, they make the game better than it perhaps should be. And he's not wrong there. It is the flip side of Heavy Rain, where the the mechanics are absolute bollocks to the bad rats level of physics engine, but the story and the world that the story is set in and the entire world building, it does make you engrossed in the world. Although, go on, Jim. Finish the sentence. Finish the part that you don't want to talk about, even though every single person in the audience already knows what's going to happen. I'm also not going to tell you whether the feather dog dies or not. Um, I know, because, you know, I've, I've finished the game, but I'm not going to say. Um, mostly, you know, out of respect for spoilers, but also because from now until people play the game en masse, it is like a secret, powerful secret that I have in my brain. Uh, plus also, yeah, I just think it's sad that we are in an industry where the moment you see something cute, you instantly assume the video game developer is going to kill it for cheap emotional points, uh, which is true of many video games in this medium. Uh, it's it's just an unfortunate consequence of a of I think a genre a medium that deals primarily in death and violence. That the only way developers know how to get an emotional reaction is to kill something lovely. Uh, that's that's my take on it anyway. Um, but we saw this with Recall, with Titanfall 2, with The Last Guardian for many years, obviously. Uh, you look at social media when they show trailers of these things at E3 or what have you, and automatically everyone's tweeting, oh, they're going to kill that, because that's the only, it's the only emotional currency we understand <laughs> in video games is death. And I, I think that's a shame. I think it's a shame we can't think of tragedy in other terms a lot of the time. There are some games that buck that trend, obviously, um, but especially in the big budget sphere, it's very rare to see. Um, oh yes, you're absolutely right. It is very rare to see. So what do you think? Do you think this is a? Do you think this is one of those that isn't a rare sight? Do you think it's common, or do you think it is the rare one? Now come on, everybody watching. You you just listen to what Jim said. If you need if you need to listen to it again, go back, rewind it, and watch that clip. And just from the tone of his voice, you already know the answer. I'm not gonna spoil it. But something something that I said earlier in this review already gives it away. I'm not gonna spoil it. But you already know the answer. You already do. And Obviously, that leads to that leads to the whole point earlier, where I said that thing about the entire story, have it being that particular way, because of what happens, and you already all know the answer. So uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. The AAA is sticking to. Uh, AAA terms and not really thinking outside the box for for the end but there you go again I won't spoil anything about the ending but just from just from Jim's tone from what I've said across the video you can probably you can probably piece the ending together without even looking it up so uh, now I obviously cut a little bit of Jim's video out there because I cut that particular section out because we're at the end of the video and it's the section that was the most fucking bullshit one. So let's take a look. So I want you to keep in mind, by the way, I'm going to play this entire section of Jim's in its entirety. And while it's uh, running, I'm going to get a stopwatch in the corner so you can see how long it takes for him to do it. And then I'm going to talk about my experience in this fucking horizontal, straight horizontal, no fucking way for the dog to go, corridor. Let's watch. Uh, or could have been. Uh, so it's, it's kind of the other side of that coin, the coin I kind of threw in Heavy Rain's face. Uh, but... The dog can do lightning, as as I showed you earlier in the footage. 
Uh, it takes a while, like everything in this game. Uh, even when the game knows what you want it to do, and even when it's on the right track, sometimes it will just take ages to do stuff, because either they decided to throw in a load of unnecessary animations, or their Trico is just being ponderous. Uh, sometimes I was like holding the controller, looking at the game, just waiting. Because, again, there's no major form of player communication. Like, it will constantly throw up tutorials about basic controls, um, like a dozen times, um, for the same thing. But it won't tell you, like, what part of the environment can Trico interact with. Uh, it can't tell you, like, oh, Trico knows what to do here. Uh, oh, it knows what you told it to do. Uh, there's, a, like, this rudimentary command system where you hold down a button to keep the character running in place and then just push the movement stick and then hope for the best and then hope that what you pointed at was a bit of the environment that the dog recognises um, or isn't. And it's hard to gauge sometimes because whether or not, say, Trico can jump over a gap is not a factor of distance or height. It's a factor of what Team Ico was thinking at the time. Uh, there are some areas where it looks like Chico should be able to reach, but it's never going to get there because that's not the puzzle. And that's that's always frustrating to deal with. That's always a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, here's another example. I mean, the dog looks like it ain't going to get down there. It looks like, you know, I've, I've gone the length and breadth of this area and it's just stood there. Uh, so here I am wondering what to do and, and unsure of what to do. And it'll turn out that it could get down here. It just wasn't getting down here. I'm trying to work out whether it's gotten down already. I'm, I'm watching this with the volume off so it doesn't affect the, the audio. And no, there, no, it's still, still up there. It will just come down eventually after this long, ponderous wait. There we go. Could have just done that in the first place. It really could have just done that. Um, and the way the camera switches for this one, because it's a cutscene, it's like they deliberately designed it this way. And I don't know why. I mean, the game would be half as long if it wasn't spent with a lot of time just waiting for the fucking dog to pull its thumb up out of its ass. But, you know, I, I won't say that it was cynically motivated that they made every animation ponderous, that they made every, um, you know, interaction with the dog more of a chore than it should have been that you're constantly stumbling and staggering with these admittedly lovely animations that just take up time um, but anyway the dog eats me here there three minutes that doesn't seem long does it three minutes you could call it two minutes 40 seconds before the dog actually got hit by the beam well you notice how it was just stuck there yeah I don't know what the fuck Jim did to trigger that. Now, obviously, you watched the clip. You just watched the clip yourself. And Jim was running back and forth, not knowing what to do. I was doing the same thing. Guess how long he sat up there. Take a guess how long that man sat, that fucking dog sat on that ledge. Because he ain't coming down in two minutes. Did he come down in three? No, he did not come down for a very fucking long time. Going back to this picture, you see this magic art picture? Going back to the story? Yeah, during this time, I was searching the forums, thinking the game had fucked up. And during that time, I evolved my Brion into a Primarina. I'm a gay sea lion, arf arf. Now that's, I was at level 32. That's two whole fucking levels. So how long do you think? Now you've made your guess. Let's see if you're right. It took me... Ready? It took me 17 minutes to get him down. It's a linear hallway. It is a linear hallway. It's fucking... It's from one end of the room to the other. There's no fucking switches in between it. There's nothing... 
There's, there's nothing to pull. There's no barrels to feed him. You can't shine your shield at him to get him down. There's nothing. There's, there's nothing. And I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. I kept walking back and forth. I, I climbed the fucking cage again. I petted him. I climbed down the cage again. I was doing everything to get him down he would not come down and it was driving me mad i was like i must be doing something wrong i must be um i, I and then i was checking i was i was checking the fucking forums i was i was like what's the cage it looks like a cage cage area last guardian cage yeah what am i doing wrong and every, it, it was just saying he'll come down that's what all the forums were saying. That's what that's what everyone was saying. They were just saying he'd come down, but he wasn't coming down. So then what? What? Well, well, if he's not coming down, if he's not coming down, what do I do? So so I, I just I just kept I just kept repeating the cycle. I, I just I was just fucking playing Pokemon with one hand, just. Walking around, tapping the A button to, to let Brion do attacks, while at the same time moving the controller stick on the PlayStation 4 up and down, you know, walking from one end of the corridor to the other, hoping and fucking praying that his stupid, his fucking brain dead Minecraft pig AI would actually kick in and be like, oh, oh, oh sorry, you, you sub. You want me to come down? Oh yeah, sorry, I, di I didn't realize. And then he, he fucking finally comes down, and it's like. He, Oh, oh, oh. And uh, as you can probably tell, that was the part where after after the dog at me, and we 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 basically had an auto save. That was like okay, dog eat me auto save. It's to start a new section. I fully saved the game at that point. At that point, I had to go. I had to go get a drink. I had to go. And just, just fucking play Overwatch for like an hour. I ha I had to stop. I had to physically stop for an hour because it 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 just it, it just. So yeah, that was that that was the fucking that was the part that almost made me quit. I was like, this took that fucking long, and now. It's, and now, I've still got the rest of the story to go. And if it took that looking that long for a stupid AI to kick in on one puzzle, uh, what what if on the final puzzle it takes twenty minutes, thirty minutes? I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't know. Can I really sit here and and do that again? And this is a hallway. I want you to keep that in mind. This is a horizontal, no puzzle. Fucking linear Final Fantasy 13 linear ass hallway. Can you imagine if he had to solve a puzzle as well? Can you imagine if you had to include the fucking ba bad rats barrel physics into this as well? I, I couldn't do it. So uh, yeah, I, I had to. I had to stop. I had to physically stop for an hour. But I did get through it. I did get to the end. And as I say, I know what happened to the dog. I know what happened to the child. And now we're going to move on to the final verdict. So, my final verdict for The Last Guardian is... A disappointing 2 out of 5. Now, I want you to take that with a grain of salt. If you have been waiting for this game for so long, you don't don't go into it expecting perfection. It's not. It is. It feels ten years old. However, if this was what you wanted, you will enjoy it. The world that it creates will suck you in. The story is gripping, and some of the moments between the child and the dog will make you happy. So if you're if you are like fantasy, if you are a fanboy, get it. You like if if you waited for this, get it. You'll like it. For everyone else that is that like Alexander that didn't even know about the Last Guardian until like two months ago, don't. It's not what you're after. It is a 
extremely, extremely frustrating game. Not frustrating in the ways of difficulty, frustrating because it shows its age. This game was scheduled to release in 2010 and it shows. The graphics are from 2010. Graphics don't make a game, we can lay it slide. But the wonky ass physics feel like a fucking 10 year old physics engine. The dog's AI feels so, so outdated and the dog's AI combined with the physics engine when you need to get it to eat a barrel will frustrate you to no end because half the time either the dog won't do what it's told or it just won't outright do anything or it won't eat the barrel or in terms of the physics of the barrel the barrel will either bounce off somewhere it'll roll out of the place it's gonna be or it won't land in the right place and it's going to, it is so fucking aggravating like it's beyond words the aggravation from the outdated systems are beyond words as I say, it's not the worst game. It's got some very nice visuals. It's got a great story. It's got a great pacing for the most part when the dog's not fucking up. It's, it's, it's got a lot of good. And as Jim said, I'm kind of pissed. Because I, I followed The Last Guardian. Not to the degree of people that said, like, oh, I can't wait for 2010. I've been following it for a few years, like 2013, 2014, so, you know, three-ish years. I've been following it for three years, and I'm like, I'm like, Jim, I am I am disappointed that I have to give the, the Team Ico guys, the same guys that made Shadow of the Colossus one of my favorite games of all time. I'm so, I'm so annoyed that I have to give them guys a two out of five. And yeah, it's got trouble development, but like Duke Nukem Forever, I was a biased piece of shit on my first review with Duke Nukem Forever. And like, I, 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 I know it's trouble development. I know it's trouble development. You can sit there and tell me all day it's trouble development. I gotta take it into account because it's fucking Duke Nukem Forever all over again. And it, it can't live up to six years of expectations. It just can't. It was like you wouldn't. It was never going to be perfect, alright? I, I understand this. I was going into this review hoping for a 4 out of 5, maybe a 3 out of 5. You know, it's an average game. It, it's okay. But, and that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. If I could give the Shadow of the Colossus guys at least a 3, I would have been happy with myself. But just how fucking broken that dog is. How absolutely frustrating he can be I was like I, ca I can't I, I can't give this a three it's it is really really killing the game that this dog acting up combined with all of the other mechanics like the like trying to catch the the dog's tail when when you're falling or just trying to make the barrel go in the right place all these little shitty mechanics are clearly on outdated systems and are clearly outdated it just drags it down enough from a 3 to a 2. So, yeah. This is uh, this is how the 6 year story ends. And apparently some people are saying it's 10 years. But I, I didn't know it was 10 years long. But this is this is how the 6 year saga ends. Pretty uh, pretty underwhelming and quite fucking frustrating with, dog it, with the dog's AI. But as I say, if, if, you, if this is what you wanted... If you're fancy, if you have been a fanboy of this, then it's it's got a good enough story, it's got a good enough world that you got you're gonna get engrossed in it and you're probably gonna like it. But to all of the to all like the twelve year olds that have only just heard of this like literally yesterday when it came out, I can't, I can't recommend it. I just I just can't. So it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, somewhat of your own choice here. But myself, it's two out of five. It's it's extremely frustrating. And it's, it was never going to, to live up to any hype. And it's the dog AI. The fucking dog AI makes it almost unplayable. So, yeah. I'm sorry if that's not what you wanted to hear. And I know it's going to be like Undertale. I know going to be a lot of negatives about that. Saying, oh, fuck you, Spyro. Have that you shit on my dog bird. But, uh, dog bird's a little bit retarded. Sorry to tell you. 
So, uh, yeah. Sorry if this disappoints you a bit, but that's uh, that's the way these games, uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles with these six year games, or in Duke Nukem Forever's case, 14 year old games. It can't, it can't live up to six years of hype. So uh, yeah, Final Fantasy 15 is coming next. That will be the last review of the year. It's already pretty much half recorded, and then we're gonna do the top five and bottom five. Apparently, Shantae is gonna come out on December 20th. So Shantae might be the last game of the year. It might squeeze on. But the list might already be half recorded at that point, so um, it's it's going to be like maybe a 2017 game, but we'll see. But for now, thank you all for watching this uh, this rather strange type of review. But again, it was it was just so difficult to to figure out the correct way of doing the Last Guardian because of its development cycle, because of its development trouble woes and. I just didn't know the best way to do it, but don't worry, Final Fantasy 15 is all back to normal, and I've got a lot of footage for that, but yeah, so, thank you all for watching this uh, review of The Last Guardian, sorry if it didn't meet your expectations, but uh, yeah, if you did, if you did enjoy it, then do please feel free to leave a like, and uh, if you didn't, then let me know, let me know what you like about The Last Guardian, and uh, if you want to see more reviews and stuff coming soon and don't forget to press the subscribe button and the notification bell because YouTube's a piece of shit and there are links below to my Twitter, DeviantArt and Patreon if you want to go the extra mile but for now, thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you in the next one